lives. Now, Anna O'Brien is struggling because she cannot control her weight and she not, cannot control her weight because she needs weight loss surgery, guys. Sorry. She's tried to do it on her own. She can't do it on her own. She should have gotten the weight loss surgery first. Lost as much real fat, which she still has plenty. Then gotten the liposuction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, beautiful people. It's Mama Goob. So I want to take a look at another creator's video about Anna um, O'Brien, otherwise better known as Glitter and Lasers. This is Obese to Beast um, John. Now, I have kind of a... I like John. John's cute. John's adorable. John's fun to watch. <laughs> but I feel like him and... So he used to be really in with um alan roberts now alan roberts is interesting i uh i mean i don't really watch him that much i sometimes do he's a little over the top for me personally and i'm that's saying a lot because you know mama's not afraid of the f word but um so i feel like because john maybe used to be so strict in the past like he's not he's definitely giving these girls a pass or at least he has in the past i haven't watched his video yet it's like he's trying to skate the oh i'm very you know sensitive and i don't want to give people a hard time i don't want to be seen as mean to kind of saying uh oh, yeah these girls are fucking it up but um so today he is almost comparing her to amberlyn reed Video is called Glitter and Lasers Running on Lipo and Delusion. So obviously this caught my attention. I haven't watched it yet. I was very tempted to watch it last night, but I figured we'd watch it for you. So I would like to say hello to my members who are seeing this the day I recorded it, which is Saturday. Um, no idea. What's today's date? September 7th. Okay. God damn. I can't believe it's September. But anywho. So, hello to my members uh, who are seeing this several days early. Who are you guys? Stephanie Kerr, Christine Konecki, Robin Wright, Sarah Lewin, That One Chick, DDH, Kriska, Bree, Catherine Beebe, Leah Tokyo, Julie B, Miss Mary, Heavenly Heather, Kelly, Kiersey Gates, Claire Sparkles, Cat Hospital of KW, Debbie McCrindle, Mola Grump, Jennifer Lewis, Jody Stanley, Evil Valkyrie, and Purple Talons. Thank you. Um, you could be members by clicking the join button in the description of this video. If you're an Apple user or an iPhone user, you have to do it on a computer, strangely enough. Um, but Anything you guys do to help me, like like the video, share the video, you don't have to be members, but if you are members, you will get special perks. But even liking and watching the video and sending a comment really helps my channel, which I'm still trying to grow. But anyways, guys, without further ado, let's see what excuses John can make for Anna, or let's see if he's really going to hold her feet to the fire. Alrighty, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to be talking about Anna O'Brien or Glitter and Lasers. We have talked about Anna a few times on the channel. If you're not familiar, she is someone that kind of rose to prominence with when body positivity was probably at its peak. Um, she is a person that's in a bigger body and she made a lot of content. She's in a bigger body, like a costume. Like she chooses to wear this, but she does choose to wear this bigger body. But uh, content kind of talking about, uh, you know, life in her bigger body, and she she just kind of gained uh, quite a big following because of that. Anna has had what I would call probably a tumultuous relationship with her body, and especially her body as well as the internet. Um, now I think the. Yeah, I'm already starting out the video um, not super happy that he's a, he's giving her, he's letting her use her vocabulary. Instead of, instead of setting the record straight, I mean, I 
it delusions in the title. Maybe he'll get to it. All right. I'll, I'll let him finish. Way The best way that I can describe Anna is kind of there's there are a lot of parallels, I think, with someone like Amberlynn Reed when it comes to her body and the Internet. So here's the funny thing about her and Amber. So think about it. They both started around the same time and um, glitter and lasers, Alexander, Alexander Rodriguez now. Anna O'Brien, look at Anna O'Brien's channel and look at it, uh, Amberlynn Reed's channel. Look at Anna's life, look at Amber's life. Okay, two very different. They started similarly, although people will say that Anna has more privilege than Amber, which is true, because Anna was born into wealth. She got to go to a good college. Um, she had a strong-ish family, I guess. Although, I think she doesn't speak with her father now. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to get into all that. But So at least, you know, Anna had the upbringing that Amber didn't. But I don't think that that necessarily is a good excuse for Amber being where she is right now. And I can't even, I can't even watch the reaction channels who watch her. I'm just so done with Amber. Um, I don't think I can watch this, this, um, process in her life. Number one, um, I feel like she is unaliving herself quicker now than she's been in the past. I can't watch that. Plus, I don't want to see her fake sa sappy happiness. Number one, I don't believe it. I don't think it's genuine. Number two, I'm going to heck for this. She doesn't deserve it. She just doesn't. She's a terrible shit person who does not deserve this happiness. And I don't say that about anybody really but her. Like even Alexandra Rodriguez on the flip side. I think that her now with this baby, I'm very positive about and she deserves and what she's eluding now is genuine Alexandra Rodriguez. Amberlynn Reed, this whole disgust is not genuine. This is her just happy. Somebody's finally fucking claiming her. Okay? That's all this is. I can't watch it. Amberlynn Reed's too old for this. Now, Anna O'Brien is struggling because she cannot control her weight and she not cannot control her weight because she needs weight loss surgery, guys. Sorry. She's tried to do it on her own. She can't do it on her own. She should have gotten the weight loss surgery first. Lost as much real fat, which she still has plenty. Then gotten the liposuction. That I would have been, um, thought, I, you know, I would have really liked to follow that journey. Because, um, and I don't know, I'm still following this journey. I'm still interested in it. I would love to get this uh, surgery. But, um, so I'll still watch her, but I don't think she's doing it right. And I think she's fooling her audience that thinks, oh, she just couldn't lose any more weight because of her lipedema fat. Bullshit. All right. Bull fucking shit. Really? Okay. Here we go. So, okay. But let me let Mr. John finish in all his beauty and how she posts about these things. The reason that I say that is because I think like, if you were to see an, a video from Anna and just took it kind of at face value, or especially if you watch maybe someone reacting to a video of Anna's or talking about a video of Anna's, you would be very confused. Like, why does this person have a problem with this person? I don't get it. It just seems like it's just someone trying to do their best, um, lose weight or whatever. Yeah, it's because you're a casual viewer and you don't understand the backstory it is right like I don't I don't get why people have a problem but it's one of those things that I think as you dig a little bit deeper you start to notice some inconsistencies and people have started to notice that and have talked about that and that's kind of where a lot of the issues lie some of the better examples of like kind of like the flip-flopping is like it's not just that Anna would say oh I want to lose weight or I don't want to lose weight it was like f being fully in the body positivity space and being like basically like anyone that says you should lose weight like they, they had a problem with that but then going fully the other way of like I need to lose weight. Yeah, I think she she, she most of her life or most of her career online is spent on the fence. 
weight for my health and then kind of flipping from there. There was just so many different changes and turns and flips. And and a lot of people started that were digging deeper and that were like followers of her that were very invested. Like you're saying one thing and then you're doing another and I don't understand why. And then when people would start to question, they would kind of be called haters and they would be confused because they're like, wait, criticism. Uh, Anybody who criticizes, why do we bother? Well, number one, having an opinion for me is like, um, having an opinion and expressing it for me feels stronger than being hungry. You know what I mean? Like, you know how you feel hungry and you want to eat? Well, when I have an opinion and I don't feel like it's being expressed, I have to let it out. This is why I make these videos, guys, because I can't shut up. But, um... So a lot of people are like, well, why do you bother? Why do you bother coming on here hating? We just don't watch her. Hello, it's not the point. It's the point of somewhere, somebody who's in a somewhat similar situation. I will, very different from Anna, was never that big. Didn't come from her background. Um, You know, didn't jump in, not jumping in two legs with social media. But I can still say that I've been bigger. I've had, I have lipedema. Um, you know, I, but I've had weight loss surgery. That's why I comment. I'm trying to set the record straight guys, or at least offer a different perspective of honestly, I don't really have an agenda. I feel like, um, like John here does have an agenda. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is their career. I'm just here because, you know, I like to spout off at the mouth and, um, you know, I like to make videos. Um, it's nice earning some extra money, but it's not my ulterior motive. All right. I make the money to produce the videos. Okay. But that's why I watch these to set the record straight, to solve, to itch the scratch I have inside to just let my feelings out. Who said this and now it's not. And so that kind of has snowballed into a lot of people like, a lot of the stuff that is being said, they just don't really trust that much. So there's a ton more that kind of goes into that, but we're not going to go into all of that a stuff because more. I don't uh-huh. want this video to be too long. But it all kind of came to a head recently. Anna actually had two uh, liposuction surgeries to help with their lipedema, which I do think is great. Uh, but in that video, especially towards the end, she says some things that a lot of people are like, wait, hold up. I don't know like w- what's going on here, right? I wonder what video he's, did I miss a video of her? I will check after. But before we get into that video, I did want to talk about the surgery that she had. Um, And so this is the doctor that she had, David Amron, um, that she's going to. And the Amron approach to treating lipedema, right? And it says, using a highly technical and customized method of body contouring, Dr. Amron has established the most effective lipedema treatment known today. Surgical intervention, intervention by liposuction to remove the disproportionate fat storage tissue is the, o- is the only recognized treatment that can truly alter the course of lipedema. Lymphatic sparing tumescent, tumescent? Um, liposuction under the local anesthetic um, is the recommended approach by Dr. Amron. You can see a perfect- I think I read this to you guys too. I don't remember. Example of how Dr. Amron provides the best lipedema treatment Beverly Hills <clears throat> can offer in this person's success story below. There's a reason that I kind of go over that, that girl, because again, the there's, there are claims that are made that this surgery does that a lot of people are like, <laughs> hold up. I don't know if that surgery can do all of those things. Without further ado, let's finally get into the video. So this is the video right here. Update my lipedema removal surgery results so far. The Most of this video is kind of her just talking about her experience and she kind of gives advice to people that might be going through the same thing. So it's just not important you know again i'm glad that she got the surgery i think that it's a good thing uh, but we're going to start here at about 13 minutes in because that's when some of the claims are made that people maybe disagree with a little bit around four weeks i found myself like a lot more mentally clear as well so a lot of that fuzziness that i had before yeah kind of started to we watch this you know dissipate and i also found myself thinking of ways to like sustain what i've done so i started looking into more like conservative treatments and things like that so yeah i got yes yes so now she looked into it at one of those vibration boards i got a trampoline obviously i've been on a waiting list for a tactile pump which is like the big pump that goes on your legs and and mimics mld that you use every day so i got fit for that so i started really facing the fact that my lifestyle for the rest of my life was going to have to change yeah that was really positive in some ways, but also very difficult. And I think 
<sighs> Had, hadn't I been saying at least whatever, because I've had the vibration, I gotta start using that again, Jesus. I'm like worse than she is. But she, she lied. She lied on her video to get, I guess, insurance. I, I don't know, but um, I don't know. My insurance would laugh in my fucking face if I even, they don't care. I can't even get my fucking veins done again. Yeah, some effing words. Tough. Um, I'm going to be honest. I was a little delusional. I went into... So a this, little. this is something that some people have issue with, right? Is because a lot of people were saying that like when this diagnosis was coming out and and it was doing this 5k run and like going on these runs again that's that's contested as well whether or not they were runs but that's not what this video is about and people would say like hey maybe this isn't the best for your condition like we should you know you should be careful and it was just always like well i'm gonna do whatever i want i don't care what this condition this condition isn't going to control me all that stuff so it's like there's been a lot of changes over time that people are just like you know kind of almost like i told you so type of thing right surgery with the mental thought that once all the surgeries would be done i would be magically healed and i would not have to do all of the things i was doing previously and that is just not the reality so kind of that that four week period i started making plans for long-term care the, what the, i would need to do the, what i would need but that that what I need to invest in i forgot all of this i want people to realize that like that is a very emotionally difficult journey. I don't think I can do it justice in this video, but I think when you get the diagnosis, you hear about surgery and you think that's my magical solution. Well, even weight loss surgery isn't a magical solution. Okay. I'm like watching this. Like I haven't seen this. I, um, I don't know. I guess I forgot, but it, like seriously, weight loss surgery, it's just to just the step one, right? Just to get you sort of on the right track. But, um, you know, it's not magical in and of itself. But it is literally only the beginning of how your life is going to have to change in managing this. And I was doing other conservative treatments before. No, you weren't. I know I didn't always share it on camera. And there was a reason I didn't share it on camera. And I don't really give a crap what anyone says about it. But the reality... Because it was a big lie. Is I wasn't comfortable being the poster child for lipedema. I knew as soon as I started talking oh, about shit. how I treated it or lived with it or how it affected my life that I would get a sticker slapped on my forehead. I did not feel informed enough to educate people and I just felt overwhelmed with the condition itself. I have many, many clips over the years of literally me crying, begging, begging John to turn the camera off because I hurt because I've swollen. I have videos. Yeah, there was that one video where she was in Hawaii, which was a big turning point. Yeah. Of me bandaging my leg in a hotel, which was like three years ago. No, you weren't. Okay. In Hawaii because my leg swelled. That also happened in... So again, like that, obviously that happening to someone sucks, right? Like I don't... Yeah, you're taking her word for it. He's buying her premise. I'm not like, well, he's like arguing from a false premise, but okay, John. It sucks for you. Too bad, right? That sucks. But at the same time, the, the, the things that people talk about and the issues are that during at those same times, Anna is making all these videos about going on these travel escapades and how, you know, life is great regardless of what she's going through or regardless of her size, right? That was like a really big thing that was talked a lot about. Like, oh, you know, don't let your size hold you back. Don't let this thing hold you back. And then, but then now we're being told that actually behind the scenes, she was miserable and she was crying. Well, if you want the honest to God truth, go back. I mean, even the most recent video in um, where she got the cruise to go, um, from Disney, a Disney cruise, a free Disney cru cruise where she got a suite to go visit the new island where she had the mile walk down the um, dock. She was, I, I don't know, that wasn't a good, um, I didn't feel all warm and fuzzy like she easily, easily did that walk. I, I don't know. She wasn't hiding her pain then. Crying all the time and all of these did things the were run. happening. And it's just like, why not just be honest about what you're actually going through instead of I feel like she was honest i'm sorry but i feel like she was honest during all the videos trying to put on this facade of this life that isn't even realistic and this is where i sit when i talk a lot a lot about people that are more of the i'm not saying anna is but like people that are more like the fat acceptance and the health at every side okay 
Be honest, John. <laughs> As it's like, I wouldn't be surprised if this is happening <laughs> behind the scenes at a lot of people's, you know, photo shoots or these like travel. Does he not watch, um, what is her name? Tess Holiday or whatever her name is. Uh, and John was big. He knows, he knows that it's impossible. He, he does. And I will tell you it was impossible too. Hey, I still struggle. Like I went on that Alaskan cruise. We couldn't do that one walk that day because um, I had to give up my afternoon um, excursion because it was a walking tour and it was so bitter bitterly cold that I, there's no way I could have walked. You know, I had to ha get help um, with the uh, ramps and stuff, you know, um, and I have MS and, you know, it wasn't, it sucked. It, it just sucked. Okay. But I don't remember pulling delusions because you could see it. Escapades that they have in, in reality, like how is it traveling? What, what was actually going on behind the scenes, right? These are things that it's like, why not just be honest in the moment if that's your whole thing is like, I want to be honest about what it is like. Because she couldn't. All right. If she was honest, let's say she was 100% like at Disney. Listen, hi, Disney. Thank you for the beautiful cruise with the uh, sweet... And um, I, all I had to show you was the, the video of going to the island. I don't remember what it was called. Something key. I called it K, but it's key. Um, if she would have said, uh, Disney, thanks, but no thanks. Do you think she'd get another Disney cruise after that? I don't know. We'll see in subsequent years. But she can't because she's bought and fucking paid for, John. Hello? living as a bigger person these are things that should have been brought up right and so again people just have issues it feels like the oh, things are only brought up when they serve anna no and shit when anna can spin it in a way that is positive for her it, it it's not just yes absolutely but it's because she's bought and paid for okay and i uh, we all have to work we all have to get our food right we have to live we have to breathe we have to work very few of us are independently wealthy. That's where we have the problem. It's like when she's being paid for the trips, she doesn't really say anything like outwardly. But then later on, when she's being paid for something else, namely uh, lipedema surgery, which could cost in the hundreds of thousands. I'm going to go out there and say that much. She's flying to, um, I mean, she's flying to California She's getting a private nurse. She's getting a hotel room. You know, that's some bucks. Those are bucks that most people don't have. Then she says it to suit that. It's all about the money, hun. Follow the money. Right. That's what I, I think a lot of people, does that's that? like where the crux of a lot of people's issues are. Nothing feels real. It feels like it's always planned. Bought and and the for. thing is brought up when it can be best served for Anna, right? Various other places. So... I've been traveling with compression. I have been doing a lot of these things for no, a while. Hasn't. No, because we saw that one video where it was the first time she tried those shit ass fucking stockings from Amazon. All right. The the ones where they should have had her buy them from a medical supply store, which measures her. And then they're either custom made or they fit her like the way that they're supposed to. And I would say not everything, clearly not everything, because there's a lot of things I've had to add. But I thought, I can deal with these things. I've been doing them for years. But to know that even that, even the compression and the bandaging and the, and the socks and the changes in my diet and, you know. The changes in her diet to all. I feel like, again, I'm reacting to this for the second time because um, I, I forgot how angry it made me. But, yeah, the changes in her diet of all the fake snacks that she got, the protein snacks. It's like she's a bodybuilder. She needs all this protein. Oh, the Wagovi, which helped with inflammation for me, that that was still only... So, <laughs> to say, like, the Wagovi that helped with inflammation so flippantly, I think is, is kind of wild. Um, <laughs> because the Wagovi, I think, without a doubt, helped lose weight. And I think that that's... <laughs> I was bit. trying not to say it so bluntly because I'm not trying to be a jerk, but like... We know, John. We know. Losing weight will help a lot of this stuff, right? I know that lipedema fat, it's different, and you can't just be in a caloric deficit and get rid of it, right? 
But- yes. But if the second she is completely, okay, she would have, her face would have been thin, her midsection would be thin, and she'd have like big arms, like assuming you can't, you know, you, do, you could have lipedema fat in your arms and your legs. I'd believe that. She was still, basically, yes, her, her hips were wider, her thighs were wider, disproportionately, but for the most part, she was still fat everywhere else. I mean, he's, I fucking hate when people base arguments upon a false premise. All right? I love you, John, but you're smarter than this. But being... Or are you? Significantly overweight is going to cause a lot of issues and problems just in general, right? And so, like, losing weight, the Wogovi definitely helped with that, right? There's a whole thing about her working with Norvo Nordisk, which is the manufacturer. Yes. Not- See, this is what I mean. She's bought and paid for. Absolutely. Not really disclosing that, other than, like, a video on their YouTube channel, which no one really watched. Well, That's a whole did. other thing, but it's like... That was never really brought up. She lost. Well, she did sort of say something on her Instagram. So it's a significant amount of weight. And then she ended up getting off of this medication to get this surgery, which again, I think it's good she's getting it. But then she even claimed in a video before that she gained weight after getting off of the surgery. And that caused her a lot of pain and it caused her a lot of heartache. And so it's like the the history. So what she said was we govy stopped working for her. That's what she said. And they tried to switch her medications and that, I mean, she didn't agree with it. Like, I think she had some side effects that were very bad, which of course, not everybody could take everything. Shockingly, not every drug is good for every person. But, um. Three is rewriting itself so quickly. And I think that it's like, there's always these contradictions, contradictions, contradictions that are happening over and over and over again that people are like. She's getting paid and her viewers, it's like, she thinks her viewers have the attention span of a goldfish, right? They don't remember. 90% of her viewers, yes, there's some idiots out there, I guess. Sorry, I'm like really being mean today, but um, you know who don't remember, but that's why I'm here. I'm not sugar fucking coding this, John. When you, again, when you really follow it, which you can argue, should you care that much? I don't know. That's a whole nother story. (laughs) But regardless, here we are. Um, But when you really start to follow it, you start to see all the holes in the story, right? But if you just come from an eagle's, you know, perspective and you see one post of a... If it's your first time watching her, I can see that. Just like people with Amberlynn Reed, they look at her TikTok video, the funny video of her getting... um, Two bags of chips when she asked for an apple. All right. Yeah, those people who don't know the backstory got it. But hopefully when they Google her videos, because especially with Anna, even Alexandra, um, you see more of the reaction channels before you actually see her videos. So hopefully they're getting smart and watching some of those reactors a woman that's trying to get her life together or like working out and she's bigger it's like oh this is great you know i'm happy for her and why would anyone have a problem it's very easy to think that way right but then once you start to follow and you start to see the timeline you start to realize all of the issues right that's why i have i made that comparison to amberlyn reed where it's like if you just see one video it's like i don't see what this woman's problem like why people have such a problem well (laughs) you'd have to watch the correct video okay because if you saw the shrimp video you would have quickly learned what Amber was all about, even if that was your first video. But as you start to know more and more about the lore, uh, you realize, oh, there's a lot of holes in this story, right? Only 25%. Having to deal with all of this with the added pressure it's like, of people having a ton It's like of- all her videos are made in a vacuum. Like each one, it's like, it reminds me of a sitcom from the 80s where every episode was sort of an individual thing. Like you could pick up one video of um like family ties because they didn't always really build upon each other where video where i feel like a lot of shows now build upon each other it's like okay each video stands by itself you're supposed to forget anything that happened in previous videos i don't know i just think most of us are smarter than that of opinions about my choices my journey what i have and have not done um it sucks frankly it sucks it does suck, but at the same time, you are putting yourself in that position. And I, I 
wouldn't be surprised if because of yourself putting yourself in that position, it made it so this surgery, I, I would be surprised. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You're wrong. I would be surprised if she ended up paying full price for this surgery, right? Or at all. It, no. I would be surprised. No. And so that's a bit. And then, oh, John, oh, we love you. You're an idiot. All right. I don't think she got it for free. I know a lot of people think she got it for free. I don't think so. Or at least maybe she got the actual surgery for free, potentially. She still had to fly out there. She still had to get a hotel. She still had to purchase a nurse um, or purchase the services of a nurse, I should say. Mm, can't buy people. Uh, sorry. But, um, you know, or she was reimbursed for being an ambassador, just like Starbucks gives her money. By the way, Starbucks... Give me money. Look, look, uh, I, bu I buy your shit. Uh, you know, I could do a better job. But anyways, I digress. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> Benefit, right, of sharing your life on the internet and like, but then obviously there are going to be downsides, which, which is people having an opinion and sharing that opinion, right? But I believe educating people on this journey and educating people about this condition educating is important. Educating people. Because I am stage four. That is bad. And I hope that I can help women who are in stage two get treatment before they have to deal with all the bullshit I have to deal with. Because candidly, if I had dealt with this 10 years ago, I may not have to do all these extra things. Yeah. If she would have had weight loss surgery 10 years but ago, now she, probably wouldn't have to, she probably wouldn't have to deal with all this. My abilities are going to be diminished. And that is a hard thing for me to swallow. I am still holding out for the fact that maybe I have some miracle recovery, but I may not. I mean, I understand feeling that way, but I do think that there's there's a lot more hope than just feeling like, oh, it's it's game over now, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I just don't. It might be, it might be game. It might be, John. It might be game over for her. She did wait too long. All right. Um, she needs to just lose regular weight. I, I disagree with that. I think that there's, there's definitely a lot of hope, but like, and again, I don't mean this. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but like Anna clearly has some weight to lose. And so if that weight is lost again, I get it. Lipedema, but th that's not all, all the fat is not lipedema fat. Okay. Oh, John, you're so brave. I don't think at least. Right. And so if you are in a caloric deficit, you're losing weight, you're being consistent. You're, you're consistently working out, not just for sh short spurts of time and then kind of falling off for a while and then going back to it and then falling off for a while and going, you know, being consistent over time, years and years. Like I do think that there's a lot of life that you still have and a lot of things that you can enjoy. And so just being like, well, maybe it's just the game game over into the road for me. I think that that's being a little too hard on yourself. And that's because I didn't deal with it sooner. And I also am very aware that because of the way healthcare works in not only the US, but many other countries, many people are not able to manage their condition. And I also hope that by making videos like this, that that changes as well. And I hope to be an advocate for that to change because it's frankly ridiculous that our healthcare system will pay for a gastric bypass, will pay for a knee replacement, will pay for vein surgery when they literally could just treat the root problem. Now my insurance, well, okay. So I was lucky when I had my sleeve gastrectomy, my insurance company was a lot more liberal with it, right? Um, I didn't really have to jump through as many hoops as other people, but now, you know, we're looking into it for other people and the hoops are ridiculous, okay? Like, I think they want you to go to like a weight loss doctor. It's either six months or a year, I don't remember, but you have to pay cash for that, which is not cheap. It's, it's unaffordable. They definitely won't cover the weight loss medicines like we govy. Nothing. Like nothing. They won't even, they're not even going to hear it. Your insurance company asks for it. They're going to be like, Psh, no. Um, you know, the vein surgery, like I said, I need mine redone again. They laughed the first time the doctor put it through. And we'll see again because I have it now scheduled again for October. And we'll see if they actually pay for it. Um, so... Even if you have good coverage, there's no guarantee that any of that is going to be covered. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to, to hell for this, but I know people on government care who had an easier time getting weight loss surgery and stuff than I did on my own care. So I think if you want it, you know, 
you can get it in the United States. I'm not ready to shit all over United States healthcare because healthcare nowhere is perfect. I don't care what you say. You can argue all day. Well, Canada, it's free. Yeah, Canada. Look at Foodie Beauty. So um, there's always fucking hassle. There's hassle in life and everything. Nothing's unlimited. All right. It's called supply and demand, basic economics. Nothing can be free and just widely available. And not only that, Nothing is for everybody. Believe it or not, even certain vaccines, not everything is right for every single person in the world. Okay? You have to work with the doctor. Problem, which is lipid. I'm just not ready to shit on America's healthcare just yet. It's shitty, but it it is what it is. Okay? You got to work around it. If you want something bad enough, you'll figure it out. Now, that's that's just interesting because like I mean, I think that there can be an argument like should should they pay for, you know, uh, (laughs) should they pay for weight loss surgeries and stuff like that? I think that there's I think that there's merit to pay for that. Yeah. And I think it's interesting to I think it's it's better for her to get weight loss surgery because the drugs you cannot be. Well, you can be people with diabetes have to be on um, Ozempic for the rest of their life. But. I don't know that that's really doable, especially when it's, you know, fucking 1200 bucks a month. I mean, God damn. But, um, you know, at least the weight loss surgery, if done correctly, and if you work it, is a solution for life, or at least will help you stay at a weight that you're not considered a death fat. Okay. That to me is worth it. Like if, my insurance dollar, I'd rather see weight loss surgery than we got I mean, not everyone that's severely overweight has lipedema. And so like to conflate those two, I just feel like they're different. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I think that I think in general, I mean, we're not going to get into healthcare for all, but you know, I think that anyone should, <laughs> it shouldn't be prohibitive for anyone to get anything that's life altering, life saving <laughs> surgery. But again, we're not, we're not going to get into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that it, <laughs> you shouldn't be prohibited to. Why is he laughing? Uh, something that could be severely life changing for you because you can't afford it. Uh, but you know, there, there's, there's limits, I think. So there's well, a lot of supply and demand. A lot of things I'm sure I didn't Basic answer. Economics. And um, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I will be talking about this. throughout. My- so it's interesting because if you actually re- read one of the top comments, um, it says, can you do a video about how things change so fast from the 5K and running on the cruise to where you were limping into surgery? Did you have an injury, right? Um, and then it's interesting that we never saw the compression, socks, exercise, bandages, dietary changes. Maybe that would have been helpful. It's the inauthenticity for me. That is a big word. And so, again, it's like there are plenty of people in this comment section, right? Her comment section that are noticing these inconsistencies. Yeah, and she let them stay in, which is amazing. <laughs> and that's the biggest thing, I think, at the end of the day. And the last thing that I wanted to bring up was a post slash story that was posted by Anna on her Instagram. And this is it right here. This also, there was also a reel uh, kind of posted in conjunction with this, but I, I don't think it's super necessary to go over. But she um, basically in that uh, in that reel, she talks about finding some pants that she had in 2017, which you can see in this photo. And then- she looks bigger in 2024. I didn't see this. Well, I saw the, the jeans. I think we watched it, but... Um- she looked smaller in 2020 and 2017 no and she, she just was. found them and she put them on and they fit right and so this says 2017 2024 she kind of talks about you know how that makes her feel and so it she goes on to say i was going to record a video but i just keep crying i know this is just the beginning but sometimes these changes don't feel real beyond these genes i've seen my pain in my knees and thighs disappear my digestive issues vanish my metabolism return my acne calm down and my anxiety decrease and then in quotes or in parentheses also i have seen i have two surgeries left to treat my calves and upper body now wow she's only getting four huh i don't know what i see from that and like the what i'm getting from that is like she's claiming that these surgeries have made her metabolism 
return, whatever that means, and her anxiety decrease and acne calm down. All right. So anxiety, because maybe sometimes you get anxiety because you know you should be doing something, but you're not, causes anxiety. Maybe that's why she's better because she... um, She's finally addressing the problem. Maybe that's what it is. I don't think that lipedema fat in and of itself causes anxiety. Yeah, I I'm think that they're like that. I, I would hope that she's talking about the weight loss as well because she di- she has lost a significant amount of weight in my opinion from when she did like the first that first video yeah. she did with Norvo Nord. She lost like a hundred pounds. Risk like when she was like I would say probably at her heaviest versus where she's now like she's lost a significant amount of weight so obviously that's going to help (sighs) and so I think that I hope that she's not attributing all of those positive changes to these basically liposuction surgeries that she's undergone because I feel like that's taking the power away from herself and okay but in definition just sheer definition liposuction you suck the fat out how is that not losing weight especially like in the future like i said i think that there is more weight to lose and those are losing you that think? weight can be so beneficial for the future right and so i just think it's interesting i'm curious so here's it just clicked in my head this is what i think uh, uh anna's thinking she gets the liposuction she feels better now she can she's going to be more able to exercise off her shitty diet and her alcohol usage That's what I think is happening here, which is it couldn't be further from the truth. Because if she couldn't lose the weight by exercising like a fiend before, she's definitely not going to do it now. Curious what people think down in the comment section down below. If you have been following, I would love to know what you have to say. Yeah, we'll see what Um, people said. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Yeah, go ahead. Go watch his video. He's, He's cute. He's got good stuff. All right, let's see the top comment here. It seems like Anna keeps looking for the magic bean, finds the magic bean, realizes the magic bean also requires work, and moves on to another magic bean. And occasionally, she is dishonest about what exactly the magic bean is. I watched her until I felt like she was becoming the definition of toxic positivity. Exactly. Well, I mean, I still enjoyed her... um, I still enjoyed her, I still enjoy her try on videos because I think it's fun to watch, um, especially when something looks nice on her, which increasingly more and more, it's very hard to find stuff that looks nice on her. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, Anna is by far the most Delulu person on YouTube. No, she's up there. She's definitely top 10, but she's not the most Delulu. The jeans thing makes even little, even less sense when you think she spent the last few years telling us how well she eats and works out. So how is she back in the jeans? Is she saying <gasps> she gained weight? <sighs> we go from being able to run at any size and how dare anyone question her ability to I have been in so much pain that I lost my mobility to now I fixed everything because my body is not like any other human and defies the laws of nature and thermodynamics. Everything, everything, (laughs) everything is extreme and fits into her storyline. When the error is over, it's like it doesn't exist if it contradicts her next storyline. It's like, It's like her former videos don't exist or we're all goldfish and we can't remember. (laughs) She says she's been on an anti-inflammatory diet yet films herself eating a a plate of cream cheese bagels saying winning to stick it to the haters. Then she cries about inflammation. Yeah, you showed us. No, you guys. She's not lying now. She was lying before. (laughs) You can totally believe her now unfortunately i think she believes herself well there's a paycheck in it so (laughs) i think she's confusing because her beliefs are transactional she believes in whatever the highest bidder is telling her to believe at any given moment exactly (laughs) glitter admitting that she will need long-term care makes me concerned for alr's 
complete disregard for her future. Well, with ALR, it, she has a girlfriend now. That's all that matters. Somebody's claimed her. And I am sure Tommy, Emily, whatever the fuck we're calling her today, by the way, it gives me creeps. This, she gives me the chills every time I see her. I'm talking about Tommy, Slami, whatever the fuck her name is. She will totally put, put her in the nicest, um, her and her mother, Emily and Amber's mother will put her in the nicest long-term care facility that Amber Lynn's money can buy. Trust me. Anna got popular because it was so refreshing to see someone in a large body making regular social media content and having fun with it. Where it went wrong is turning into toxic positivity where Anna wasn't sharing her true experiences, which is why her addressing her health issues feels like whiplash on her channel. Um, this is kind of true, but uh, I don't know. But she's acting like this is, no, let me just read this. She's acting like she has freaking cancer. Come on, lady. If you consistently ate healthfully for the long haul, you wouldn't be 500 pounds. It's, it's really that simple. But she does. She takes it to the extreme like, oh, woe is me. You know, like she can't walk. Remember that video that she had to change the title? Come on, people really have, like, again, there's people with cancer. There's people with actual disabilities. I love your compassion and gentleness. Well, I just find it annoying, honestly. I mean, yeah, you're cute, but mm -mm, it's fake. It's like, it's like he changed, okay? So did um, Zachary Michael. Like, he changed. Something happened. And both of them just turned. And I don't like it. Like, I don't like it. Just call, us, call it like it is. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to close with this because this is, this is it. This is 100%. Influencers are paid to lie. Plain and simple. Real life doesn't get clicks. 100%. You can say that with everybody who we react to here. Everybody. It's fine. It is what it is. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say. All right, guys. Well, even though the cutie patootie is a cutie patootie, I find him infuriating. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But um, anyways, my members of mind, um, I hope you enjoyed this early release. And once again, if you'd like to become a member, click that join button. It's not really expensive, kind of, $2.00. Um, two dollars. <laughs> I couldn't help it. You know what movie that's from? Drop it in the comments. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. That's all I had for you today. And I hope to get you on the next one. Bye.